Uh, once again, dear colleagues, good afternoon, and thank you all for coming to this event so soon after the Easter. Uh, Michelle and I would like to hear your opinions about the new proposal for the forest monitoring uh, law. European forests, of course, uh, uh, are very much needed for biodiversity and uh, climate resilience, as well as the goods they provide. But for now, there is a lack of comprehensive EU-wide uh, knowledge about them. The European Commission has proposed a forest monitoring law to protect and uh, restore ecological balance, and it believes that uh, the existing data collection prioritize uh, timber production, ignoring, uh, on one hand, on the other hand, other uh, ecosystem service. The proposed law mandates uh, standardized data collection, including uh, mapping of the key forest. But it's still unclear how the data collected would be used if there are any links with the, any other policies, such as uh, nature restoration law, or biodiversity initiatives. Good forest monitoring is an important investment in uh, climate and biodiversity goals and also necessary for economical activity. But we should avoid uh, duplication and this question needs to be answered. Agriculture and forestry are part of the solution to modern climate and environmental problems, but we cannot make them the scapegoat. Forests are not just a carbon sink or an absolute nature reserve. They are an important renewable resources, an important part of the economy, source of income for many people. Economic activity is and must remain an integral part of our environment. We must therefore seek measures to facilitate a fair transition to move sustainable forms of farming and forest management. To delve deeper in this issue, me and Mrs. Uh, Michelle Shedrova and the European Parliament Intergroup on Climate Change, Biodiversity and Sustainable Development are hosting this roundtable to get insights from different stakeholders on this uh, legislation. So I, would like also, so I would also like to hear from you about your concerns regarding this legislation. This is a hybrid event, so some of uh, uh, the speakers will be online. First, we will have the round of national uh, experts, then the round of stakeholders, and last but not least, a commission representatives to maybe answer some questions we have. And so, without uh, further delay, I give the floor uh, to our first national expert from uh, Lithuania, Donatas Vaikasas, from the Ministry of Environment. Donatas, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we hear. Thank you. Uh, so, thank you for organizing and inviting uh, me to this important discussion. Uh, generally, we welcome the proposal to harmonize forest-related information and to have harmonized di data on forest at European Union level. The regulation consists of two parts, forest monitoring and preparation of long-term plans. Regarding forest monitoring, we believe that the proposal covers the most important aspects of an effective forest monitoring system, and it is quite ambitious in view of the challenges ahead. We hope that the proposed monitoring system will improve uh, the comparability of forest information between member states and contribute to database decision making. Uh, we support the combination of remote and ground-based observations, strengthening the role of national forest inventors and experts. However, we would like to stress that in many cases, ground-based measurements are essential for calibrating remote sensing 
and verifying its results. We believe that national experts should be involved in the examination of regulation. Uh, this process should make the best use of the experience gained by the European National Forest Inventory Network and cooperation with this organization will be beneficial for implementation and purposes of the regulation. Uh, we have some doubts about the number of monitoring indicators proposed and their compatibility with the specific natural, natural conditions of the member states. The relevance and added value of each indicator must be carefully assessed uh, and sufficient flexibil flexibility must be left to member states to choose the indicators that are also relevant to them. Uh, regarding the provisions on long-term plans, we believe that forestry is a competence of the member states uh, and therefore the proposal's provisions on long-term forest planning raise serious doubts for us. We understand these provisions are voluntary, but then it is questionable whether such provisions should be included in uh, such legal act as regulation. Also, the high number of delegated acts and uncertainties regarding, regarding the alignment of national monitoring systems with the requirements of the regulation are also a cause for concern. Uh, for example, the current definition, the proposed definition of forest land uh, does not clearly define the boundary between forest and agricultural areas, leaving room for different interpretation by the European Commission and member states, which could also undermine harmonization of this indicator at EU level. It is not clear whether agricultural areas covered by trees will be automatically included in forest land and what the criteria for this inclusion are. But of course, uh, this will be clarified in the negotiations process. Uh, finally, it is essential to ensure that the implementation of the proposal does not require disproportionate financial and administrative resources. Uh, we are ready to engage constructively in further negotiations. Thank you. Thank you, Donatas. Uh, now, uh, the next expert is from Finland, Kari Korhonen from Natural Resources Institute. Kari, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Chair, and thank you very much for, for inviting to this seminar. I'm using a presentation to outline my, my presentation and I hope you can see it now. Uh, uh, yes, sorry, we cannot see your presentation. Now, now we can, now it's fine. Okay, so I come from the Natural Resources Institute of Finland and this is a scientific research institute under the Ministry of Agriculture and I'm in charge of the Finnish National Forest Inventory, so I will be speaking on, 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 on that uh, position as, as an expert of forest monitoring. Uh, I will comment on, on the, the monitoring component of the legislation proposal, not on, not on the mani management planning part of the proposal. And the monitoring component of the proposal includes uh, three components. Uh, one is about the data that will be collected by the Commission using mainly standardized Copernicus products. And then another component is uh, the data that will be collected uh, by member states uh, uh, listed, listed in Annex to those indicators that will be collect, uh, collected the data. And then uh, there will be, there's a third component about additional forest data that is uh, in Annex 3 and uh, uh, those methodologies are supposed to be developed through implemented acts. And this is the list of those indicators that are uh, supposed to be uh, delivered by member states, uh, 12 indicators altogether. And uh, uh, I have uh, listed there on, on, at the end of each indicator, if the data source for that indicator is from National Forest Inventory. And at least for the case of Finland, uh, out of these 12 indicators, uh, it's uh, 
I think it's seven indicators where national forest inventory data will be will be providing the information. So in our, our case in Finland, we have the possibility to uh, get the, this information from our national forest inventory. Then the indicator about the removals, meaning the harvesting of timber from forests, we could derive that from a national forest inventory, but we have also other sources of information, the production statistics for that information. And then there is a number number of uh, six indicators where the data source is different different uh, than national first inventory but in the case of Finland I don't see big problems in in getting uh, delivering these data except for this indicator on the location of primary and old growth forests which I see as quite uh, at least costly costly indicator for for our case uh, so uh, as seen in the previous slide uh, more, many of the indicators in the proposal uh, are well established and uh, they are already used in Forest Europe and I think this is a good good part uh, or good uh, feature in the proposal that they, they it's mainly based on well established indicators and then it's also quite uh, satisfying that the national forest inventory that is uh, in many European countries can be the way, so data source for most of the indicators but then like I mentioned this map data on primary and old growth forests uh, that is something that we do not have in most countries in Europe I guess almost now no, no countries and in the case of Finland which is, which is a big big forest country providing this information will be extremely expensive because the data about old growth forest and primary forest must be reliable it cannot be based on remote sensing because you cannot you cannot assess from satellite images if the forest is old growth forest or not, or primary forest. And then uh, one point uh, of slight concern is there that uh, in addition to uh, the monitor monitoring proposal requests not only the statistics calculated for each country but also the original data data I understand that it's the original plot level data from national forest inventories and to me in my understanding understanding that this means that uh, the commission will be uh, uh, built a separate uh, NFI data management system that sounds like duplicated efforts as compared to the national efforts already existing. Some other observations on the legislation proposal firstly about the cost impacts uh, I think the cost impacts has been quite well, quite nicely minimized uh, through through using mainly very well existing indicators and existing monitoring systems. But then, like mentioned, the cost of mapping mapping is not uh, taken into account in the impact assessment. And then, in specific, there is the concern that uh, additional costs from the additional indicators that that are listed as an example in the Annex 3. The cost from these indicators can be very high, very remarkable, and it's very difficult to assess or estimate in beforehand what is expensive and how expensive each indicator can be when really, really the measurement starts. Then another observation is that the Several satellite images, image-based products are listed in the component that uh, will be where the data will be uh, provided by the commission, and well, that's fine. But then it's for most of those indicators, it's difficult for me to understand what is the connection between those indicators and the EU level decision making. How these are indicators are really related on the decision making at the EU level. And the third observation is that uh, there is a uh, mentioning about setting a geographically explicit identification system for the mapping and localization of forest units. And this is also a point that is for a bit difficult to uh, understand why this kind of uh, identification system is needed at EU level. I think that was my observations on the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carney. If you can uh, share with us uh, your slides, I think it will be uh, useful for, for us to have this the slides uh, and share between, between ourselves. 
And uh, thank you very much for, for your uh, presentation. Now we move to the Austria with Clement Schadauer from the Federal Research and Training Center for Forest, Natural Hazards and Landscape. Mr. Clemens, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I try to share also my screen. Maybe I'm not so successful. It's scary. Actually, I'm also here working as an expert. Uh, I'm, I'm working for the Austrian National Forest Inventory since many, many decades. So I, uh, I would like to try it once again. doesn't work. So no, no, no problem. It does not work. So no problem. I, I can speak. So uh, I try to figure out a little bit some general as aspects concerning this uh, proposal we have now on the table. So when we set up a European forest, moni a forest monitoring system in general, we try to find, of course, the clear goals. I think not all goals are defined uh, fully clear, understandable for Austria at least. Uh, we try to find the information gaps. Uh, this was partly done, but not all in all, not, not sufficient from our point of view. We should make a little bit more gap analysis in detail. Uh, we should talk about the costs. This was already mentioned by Kari, so there is need, no need to duplicate this. And then we have uh, the most important issue from my point of view that experts propose a methodology and this was not done from my point of view. I'm sorry to say so and to, to be very clear here, but uh, the experts of National Forest Inventories were not so much included or sometimes not included at all up to now. This is really a big pity from my point of view. And uh, for the future, it's very important that also experts implement and improve the system. So this is then the question of governance for the future. As already mentioned, we have two pillars for such a system. One is the field plots and one is the remote sensing pillar. It's of course very important to use both, but from the Austrian perspective, the remote sensing is overestimated. Uh, uh, concerning their accuracies and concerning what they can deliver. There is too much remote sensing and not enough field plots inside the proposal up to now. Uh, and what is also not stated at all is how to combine these two. Because there are so many expertise within European countries, how to combine these two. And it, 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 this is not mentioned at all. This is a pity. So, uh, a little bit more in detail when I talk about, about statistical estimation. What does it mean? Statistical estimation always means that we have the accuracy known. And I think for decision making, it's very, very important that you have a, a known accuracy. And uh, this is the first one. And the second one is that you have no bias. And this can be proven by statistical estimation. And it cannot be proven by mapping. This is very important from our point of view. So we need to know how to use maps correctly. This is also not handled at all up to now in the, uh, in the uh, proposal. Uh, uh, Enfin, it was already mentioned, uh, is working on such a, uh, a, a method within a, 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 a European project. Uh, and there is already a system which is developed and it calls Enfiesta. And this is a, a, a very, very sound way of, of producing statistical estimates on the European scale. And it could directly be used for, for the FISA, which should be then uh, be located at the EA, the Forest Information System for Europe. So very important, ground-based st statistical estimation has a known accuracy and it has no bias. And this is not true for mapping. But 
of course, mapping is also important, uh, and it is also mentioned that that's in general good in the proposal. Uh, uh, mainly for disturbance mapping, I guess this would be from our point of view the main issue when it comes to mapping, also at the European scale. And what it is a pity also from our side is that there is so much knowledge about disturbance mapping within the countries and they have their systems partly operational and this is not so far mentioned in the system actually there is the idea to 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 set something duplicated uh, at the european level and not so much ask the member states what do you have how could we combine this to the european level this is a pity from my point of view so, coming to the conclusions, European forest monitoring should mainly be based on statistical estimation. If maps are used, they should be combined with NFI estimation. The local and the national and the European scale should mainly be based on national and, and, and uh, uh, activities and activities of the European National Forest Inventory Network and FIN. And the huge expertise should be shared and used as far as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clemens, for your intervention. Uh, now we move to the Czech Republic. Uh, Jaroslav Kubišta from the Forest Management Institute. Mr. Jaroslav, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. And uh, let me start. I'm, I'm from Forest Management Institute, which is organization uh, providing the forest monitoring in the Czech Republic. And uh, I would like to thank for this uh, opportunity to participate in this roundtable and present our views on the new proposal. Uh, I have to stress that uh, sustainable forest management is, of course, an important topic for the Czech Republic, and we generally agree with the objectives of this regulation. However, several uncertainties need to be clarified, uh, particularly as regards the effectiveness, the administrative and financial burden, or different technical aspects of the various indicators, as uh, my colleagues were already talking about. Uh, firstly, we are of the opinion that we should start with the definition of goals or purpose of this regulation in a detail, which would later on justify the precision and resolution, both spatial and temporal, of each indicator. And this is a must that has to be done. Otherwise, we, we really are not sure that we really need uh, for example, forest area uh, updated on an annual basis and so on. And it has, of course, uh, financial implications and, and et cetera. Um, in general, it's important for us that the monitoring system uh, is efficient as possible, easy to apply, and does not impose a disproportionate financial and administrative burden. We believe that the system should be built as much as possible on existing forest monitoring systems at the national level. Uh, as uh, in our country, we have a national forest inventory, which is continuously being carried out and uh, its parameters not only cover the production functions of forests, but also provide various valuable information for the nature conservation and environmental protection sector, which is, uh, I believe, the case of uh, many other countries. And therefore, we doubt the statement in the proposal's explanatory text that there is a general lack of good quality and comparable data on forests in the EU. From the cost effectiveness perspective, it's crucial to build on existing definitions from existing international forest reports, as significant resources have already been invested in their implementation in national forest monitoring systems. And simply, there is no time to start from scratch. It's also important that the frequency of data collection and sharing is aligned across different EU legislations. It is certainly welcomed that the data collection system should combine both ground-based service and remote sensing methods. However, as uh, other colleagues already talked about, it's important to point out the well-known limitations of the remote sensing, such as the difficulty of identifying method errors from actual trends which results in limited possibilities of interpreting the values of the indicators. On the other hand, there are already methods available that allows using remote sensing data as valuable auxiliary data for providing statistically sound estimates with known precision and accuracy, and we think these methods should be preferred. Uh, 
In preparation for this proposal, we organized a successful workshop in the Czech Republic during our presidency in 2022, where we discussed the current state of forest monitoring in the member states and the preparations for the establishment of a harmonized framework for forest monitoring. The workshop made it clear that the role of remote sensing must not be overestimated. A similar workshop was also organized by the following Swedish presidency, and we believe that the experience of these workshops should be reflected as far as possible in the final text of the regulation. Uh, also, new geographically explicit identification systems for forest units is to be adopted. The forest unit is, as far as we understand, to match a very detailed scale. And given the limitations of remote sensing, we have doubts about its benefit and purpose. Forest owners are also already loudly warning that this is a potential violation of the protection of economically sensitive information. In the case of the proposal to disclose monitoring locations of the National Forest Inventory, we see a risk of possible loss of representativeness of this survey. It means that by publishing the coordinates of the inventory plots, the state of the forest could be potentially purposely manipulated, for example, by intentional changes in management. And this is a situation we absolutely want to avoid. The proposal also contains a lot of competencies delegated to the European Commission, where we believe that they should be reduced exclusively to acts dealing with technical specifications. For reasons of legal certainty, the specification and description of the indicators should be developed at the time of drafting the regulation into a text that does not allow for different later interpretation. We are therefore thinking that the discussion of the proposal both in the European Parliament and in the Council of the EU should be very detailed and should not be rushed unnecessarily. In conclusion, I would like to say that if technical issues and variety of problematic aspects are resolved, the regulation has the potential to improve the availability of forest information across the continent, which can help, for example, to better identify the impacts of climate change on forests. The availability of relevant forest information can also have a positive impact on the preparation and implementation of other forest-related policies. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yaroslav, for your intervention. Uh, this is close our first part for uh, uh, intervention from the, our experts. And now we move to the, the second part to different stakeholders. And uh, first on my list, uh, uh, Helen Koch, Senior Policy Advisor, CPF. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for the opportunity to exchange with you on this very important file for, for a European forest owner. In general, we do support the principle of increasing the resilience of European forests. This is uh, something which is very clear for all forest owners. Our main concern has been that we are a bit unsure how this proposal will be supporting this goal. This is also because the proposal looks more like a data collection framework, and it doesn't really say how uh, the resilience would be happening. And also, even if you really look into it, we feel at the moment that we are still missing the big answer to the question, who's for and what for? And this is for us like a prerequisite to really dive into the discussion about the need and the possible added value. Because without a very strong stock taking of all of the many uh, monitoring systems that exist, Within Europe, we, you had like several excellent representatives, but we also have many other international processes, whether to the FAO or the Forest Europe. So there is a lot of work which has been done, which is being done, including on harmonization and standardization in Europe. So that would be like a first question on our side, the exact objective, the exact purpose, and the exact user. A European policymaker does not ha have a different need that a forest owner would have. So that's a, in terms of the design of the proposal, that's an essential question to be answered first and foremost before moving towards the discussion. As other speakers have identified, we have question with regard to the specific indicators, their definition, their use, and oddities and discrepancy uh, within the description of those indicators and other EU legislation or other reporting system. 
In that regard, we are also very concerned with the sufficient reflection with regard to data ownership, possible future interpretation uh, and adequate uh, governance. In this, we would really wish for stronger governance and exchange from uh, the expert in the national forest inventories, among others. The financial aspect and related risk have already been mentioned, and the risk also to overestimate what the remote sensing could be delivering, because field data will be needed and field data collection requires works. So that's uh, something very important on our side. Lastly, there is also the question of the forest data sh uh, sharing framework and the, the approach for open access, which for us could put in jeopardy the concept of data privacy and privacy of European forest owners. So this is really something for us which is crucial to clarify the needs and when there is a need, clarify who would have need to have access to the data and under which format also we have touched upon earlier on the force unit and the possible risk linked to this. At last, um, there is the voluntary integrated long-term plan, which I have announced in this second part. On our side, we do not really see an added value of this within the frame of a legally binding initiative. So we wish for the upcoming work for the <laughs> Parliament and the Council to take the time which is needed to make sure that something which is answering to need, which proved for an added value and which is going to be as successful, uh, could be developed. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gellan, uh, for, for your intervention. And now we move to the Krista Paro, Head of Partner Relations, Estonian State Forest Management Center, on behalf of EU Statfall. Hello, and thank you very much for this possibility to reflect on the forest monitoring regulation. Uh, I am um, Christy Farrow and representing uh, Estonian State Forest Management Center and then also just four members. Uh, we have 39 members from uh, 27 countries and we manage about 30% of the European Union's forests, so we have uh, a large uh, field to work on. Uh, we, as all of the four members in Estonia, we know the value of uh, the quality data because we have put a lot of resources in this. 10% uh, of Estonian state forest employees actually work daily in the field. So they gather daily information about forests. And additionally, we have a team of remote sensing uh, who follows the processes in the forest from the sky. So we know a lot what is going on in the forests. So, and we are experts in forestry and experts in collecting and analyzing forestry data. And daily, we actually make long-term uh, decisions based on the data we collect. So we know quite well what is uh, possible to do with uh, forest data and what is possible to collect. So I'll shortly uh, reflect on uh, the Ostopper members uh, and their uh, views on the forest monitoring proposal. So firstly, uh, we see that the regulation must respect the member states' competence. We very much welcome your role in uh, facilitating the development of innovative forest monitoring, monitoring systems both financially and technically. Yes, the European Union can do that. However, the role of forest policy strategic planning and implementation should remain to member states' governments. So why? I think it's quite obvious because, because the national forest monitoring systems, they already have long traditions and they are specifically designed to meet the demands of national and local sectors and circumstances. So, they consider the ownership patterns, what we have in, in different countries. They consider the national culture and traditions, also the financial models and, and, and other aspects. So creating a new ambitious uh, new system uh, risks of uh, losing all the value we have already when collecting the data in, in all the countries. Uh, we expect that the national forest experts from member states are involved in the new forest governance in the Standing Forestry Committee and also in the Forest Stakeholder Platform, but not to just share knowledge, but really cooperate to make the best of that, the harmonization, standardization, and developing also the technical rules and procedures, because we know how to do it, uh, how to gather data, we know how to use it, and we know what is possible, and we know a lot about our national competence and possibilities, and also the, the local circumstances. Secondly, uh, data collection framework needs comprehensive analysis. And why? Uh, I think we have already talked a lot about it today. Uh, we want to avoid 
the increased complexity. We want to avoid duplication and we might want to make sure that uh, whatever data we are collecting, uh, that it fits with existing inventory systems. And also to make sure that uh, if we are, uh, we have agreed on the goal while we are gathering the data, that also the data we actually collect will meet the needs. Uh, if we talk about significant level of the data collection, which was also already stressed, um, our national forest inventory has the significance level of uh, 95%. Whereas when we talk about uh, remote sensing, we know that the currency uh, it might, might be about 60%. So this the data is not suitable for comparison of the, with the field data. And this is not suitable for uh, quality decision making. So additional field measurements are needed. And also with the current list of indicators, we will not get the big picture, which is quite worrying for us. Um, monitoring data already collected in the harmonized way from other inventories has to be included and used. So we propose to focus on observing and analyzing trends in forest ecosystems at the European Union level, instead of trying to get an overview on the basis of the scattered indicators. So have a big picture is better to have scattered picture. And thirdly, the EU forest monitoring law should have clear objectives. And they say that goals are dreams with deadlines. Uh, we, are, uh, we agree with setting high expectations because we know that in order to be innovative, we have to dream big. And yes, of course, the regulation is good for reaching the deadlines, but the objectives and resources have to be in place to support the journey we are also all going through. So our main objective as forest managers, of course, is first and foremost to manage balanced, resilient and multifunctional forest ecosystem in the long run, but the proposal does not reflect this enough. In the objectives of the regulation, instead of focusing broadly on climate change and biodiversity, which is of course very, very important, the proposal fails to clearly explain the primary objective, which should be the cost-effective and innovative data collection and reporting on European forest with an aim to ensure fully informed decision making. To conclude, uh, if you want to have a good regulation, which also supports the innovation, uh, you should uh, involve stakeholders, use their best knowledge to gather detailed, accurate, regular and timely information on the condition and management of European forests. You must also have to set ambitious but realistic goals and then you will be able to have a good basis for the data decision, data driven decision making. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kristin. And now we're moving to the Florian Marin, reporter on Forest Monitoring European Economic and Social Committee. Please, the floor is yours. I'm here, dear chair. Thank you so much for inviting the committee to this uh, to this meeting. Well, it was a highly debated opinion in our committee, um, and it is uh, uh, it is right now uh, as far as I'm seeing. So, in, in you can find our proposal uh, on our website. But just to have a brief presentation. Well, from the principal's point of view, we are thinking that uh, we are proposing that uh, uh, the forest monitoring system should be sustainable, should be safe and secure, should be cost effective should be feasible from the operational point of view, should be timely, should be dynamic, inclusive and participatory, but also should allow cooperation between science and practice, of course, for a better planning and decision-making process. Um, it has been mentioned, but uh, uh, we have already mentioned in the opinion that we, we need to avoid the duplication of the data, of the data and um, uh, the, the relation and the link with uh, data covered by other legislations, such as climate, air, but also biodiversity, uh, should be also taken into account. Uh, the problem is not necessary. The regulation is building on the actual inventories, if you are, uh, if you are uh, seeing the document. But the problem is that interoperability. We know that every member state has some na a national inventory, but the problem is how we are gathering those data in a way in which we can have an EU uh, image of, uh, of, the, of the European forest. The relation with SDGs is, is important because we don't have a perfect match with SDGs. So we have a dedicated SDG to forest. So I think it is important that this regulation and the data covered 
by this regulation should uh, should be synergical with uh, with SDGs. Um, and then uh, the respect for the rights and interests of the forest owners, of course, this should be should be taken uh, into account. And the way uh, the data or the form of the of publishing those data is also important. We have mentioned in our opinion that it should be in an aggregated form. Of course, this is a subject to discuss. Then it has been already mentioned a clear definition for forest unit should be, should be established because from our perspective is rather unclear. Uh, assuring the same level of granularity, technology, but also frequency uh, of, uh, uh, of the system is important, especially when supplementary data are being covered at the member state level. So in order to, to use those data, it is important to have the same level of the same approach from all point of view. Um, of course, this will require resources. We have already heard and the uh, dedicated resources should be available for the member states in order to fulfill all the requirements. The proposal is it, it has a certain level of, gener of uh, uh, generality, if you allow me the term. But when we are uh, discussing very concrete how the system will look like, well, we can have an image uh, concerning the cost. So I think that we need uh, dedicated uh, resource, uh, financial resources. Now, we are moving to long-term forest plans. We are thinking, because it is also part of the regulation, we are thinking that uh, we are proposing also that uh, every member state should have a forest plan because we have in EU member states which don't have a forest plan. Um, the forest plan should cover social but also economical aspects. It is not the case in the structure um, uh, of the annex, uh, proposing the annex. Uh, so I think that the social data are also uh, important. Why they are important? Because we have to, to, to create a synergy between the multilateral values of forest and the data which are being covered by, uh, by, the, by the regulation. Uh, then the role of the civil society in the partnership principle. Well, the civil society has a huge role in the, uh, in the, in the forest topic, and we are seeing this uh, all across the member states. So we think that the partnership principle should be part of the forest, of the forest plans, and the civil society should have a role in the designing, but also implementation of the, of the forest plans. Then the relation between the forest plans and other for a strategy or wood strategy, timber regulation and, and, uh, and um, other legislative uh, instruments, it is important. Then the role of the Standing Forest Forestry Committee, uh, we, we are proposing that civil society should be part of this committee. Well, there is a formulation in the regulation which is allowing of certain experts to participate. Experts is not necessarily civil society, so we are thinking that civil society should be also uh, involved in, in, this, in this committee. Then it had been mentioned, but it is important to, to have a right balance between subsidiarity principle and respect for national and EU competences. Um, as a general uh, point of view, the civil society should be involved in the, in the monitoring framework and enough transparency should be assured when we are discussing about, uh, about uh, data forest and civil society should have the possibility to use those data uh, in order to fulfill their mission objectives and activities. And of course, uh, dedicated training resources for forest managers and all, uh, also owners, but also workers should be provided in order to implement the regulation proposed. Thank you, dear chair, for allowing uh, uh, the committee to participate and we are at your disposal for future questions. Thank you uh, for your intervention and sharing the view from the, the European Social Committee. And now we're moving to the Anke Schulzmeister, all the hope, Senior Forest Policy Officer, Worldwide Fund for Nature European Policy Office. Please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much for the um, invitation and this very interesting debate. Uh, all I hear and see is that a lot of questions were raised. Let me maybe try to answer some of them. So first, I'm a bit surprised to hear about that there's unclarity of the objectives of what this law is about. I, mean, I think the Commission was right clear what it is about. It's about collecting data, and not necessarily collecting data on its own, but try to harmonize what member states have done already. So also, I'm a bit surprised about hearing so much about duplication of data. There are, of course, new elements in this, which include, for example, much more information on um, environmental biodiversity and other aspects, because let's also not forget 
when we talk about forest inventories, they might not cover all the aspects that are needed with regard to fulfilling EU required policies, especially in the um, environmental sector like the Birds and Habitats Directive. If they're in there, even the better. If not, maybe that's one of the issues you would like to look into. Also, I'm a bit surprised to hear about the challenges for forest owners. I think we see it a bit differently. We do think that this monitoring framework will allow countries to actually um, support their efforts in developing or implementing sustainable bioeconomies and meet carbon and nature targets, which are also um, required by the EU as it is. Also, um, a harmonized EU-wide picture on European forests. We should never forget that forests don't stop at borders. So I do think an exchange across borders and to see what are we doing in one way or the other is very important. Also, talking about the fact that not every forest owner might want to use its forest for forest management purposes. You know, we do think that this system will allow a very good access for payment to ecosystem services, you know, and an access which is based, as was mentioned by some of the speakers, on reliable data. And I, we do personally think, well, not personally, we do think that elements like the um, Europe, uh, Forest Europe are not as unbiased as they could or should be. They are voluntary, they leave room and gaps. And I think, you know, what this approach is trying to do is bring together the already existing data which is there and try to complement it by what is missing. Also, um, there are diverse information needs from different stakeholders. Not everybody requires the same information, but I didn't see in the legislation that this law is really um, asking forest owners to provide the data. It asks member states to provide the data and offers with the European Commission a complementary element of um, data that could be taken by satellites. So I think it achieves a harmonization of forest data across certain indicators, from economic aspects also to others. It provides services to member states, you know, because it harvests data from the Copernicus satellites, and it encourages mem member states to use this in their long-term data. Of course, we do not think that everything has been fulfilled in the legislation. We, for example, are missing some environmental elements. Again, let's keep in mind what we think the biggest benefit of this framework would be, that we can harmonize data collection, and with that, harmonize member states reporting on requirements they already have. But for that, we are missing a few elements, you know, regards, with regard to LULUCF or Habitats Directive uh, monitoring that could be um, included. We also do think that there are um, economic indicators which are missing, for example, with regard to um, the different ways forests are managed, you know, the extent of natural ecosystems compared to others, which an overview, especially with regard to the effects on climate change and the adaptation or resilience to climate change will be needed. We do think that some of the um, elements which are mentioned in X3, which would be a stepwise approach, should be moved up to the um, main text because we do think that threatened species and others should not be um, developed over time, but are important from the beginning. Also looking at the challenge we are facing currently with regards to droughts, forest fires, and other developments that have been taking place here on the time. We rather think that the, um, use, the use of GIS is actually um, a chance and not a threat to have a more harmonized approach. It never should stand on its own. And we, of course, fully agree that where we have data and where we have cooperation, let's do this but also let's see where are the gaps where it could be helpful. Long-term plans are also of importance because we know all ourselves being foresters, most of us, I guess, um, that you know we are building the forest of the future and not the forest for now. And I do think from that perspective, a long-term plan is the benefit of having instead of not having it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Henke, for your position. And now we're moving to the Ulrich Leberle, Raw Materials Director, Confederation of European Paper Industries. Please, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thanks for having invited me and, and bringing Seppi also to this important de debate. We, we, work, we work in Europe and we work with, with European forests um, to, to, to build a, 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 a bioeconomy that, that can replace fossil fuels and fossil materials. And in that sense, it is important to have good uh, data about, about state of the European forest and that we see that with, with the data sets we have today, there are a lot of interpretations uh, around. And, and I think we need to be careful that if we have, I don't want to say uh, duplications, but, but diff different sets of data that are maybe 
than in in uh, in member states and 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 in in the European Union, then there, there might it might be very difficult to to avoid even more uh, diverging in interpretations if if even the data sets are, are are diverging. So so that is why I would to, to bring three four key key messages uh, to that, that that could improve. So, so the, the first one, I think, uh, is, is, is that we, we should use those national forest inventories and, and the well-established monitoring tools that, that we have already and see how uh, to, to get uh, uh, that Im improved for, from, the, from the current level we have. Um, there are indeed um, so, some indicators are not there and, and, and maybe needed, but, but we need to make sure we need to know, we know we know how to monitor them before we say they are mandatory. We need to be sure we can we can monitor in, in a way that that um, meaningful uh, conclusions can be made and and uh, those are uh, agreed upon. A uh, second one also mentioned already. So so remote sensing. Uh, so, so here, uh, yeah. Uh, it's 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 about having them complementary uh, to, uh, to to the ground ob observation ha has already been mentioned. I, I think that is important to to uh, avoid misinterpretation of data if it is only um, only uh, based on satellite observation, and also those results should then from satellite observation should not be shared uh, without being previously validated by the member states that have the ground information to, to, to prove their, their validity and, and correctness. Also, again, they're in, 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 this, in, in this interest of, of really having the data together and not conflicting data that leads to even more um, divergent interpretation of data. Um, then um, on the, on the long-term plans and national strategies, I, I think here um, the, the mutual exchange is, is necessary on, on cross-border issues, on transboundary issues. Um, the, the focus, um, in, in our view, would have to be more on, on supporting member states that don't have them today to make, uh, to, to develop them, to develop them in, in the right way. Um, I, that should be the focus rather than imposing a, a certain standard template for, for those that have very, very good uh, long-term plans already. Uh, uh, in place, and then finally, one one benefit of of, of better uh, monitoring can can be, of course, uh, to to monitor the disturbances that 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 are ex expected to to grow uh, due to to climate change, and and there, it is it is enough. It, it is not enough to 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 just do that, but also really. Um, earmark the adequate resources to, to predict, uh, detect, and, and stock take on, on the natural disturbances that uh, are coming. With that, thank you very much. Thanks for having us in this debate. Thank you, Mr. Ulrich. And now we're moving to Mrs. Susanna Geoffre, uh, Senior Project Officer in Nature Based Solution, International Union for Conservation of Nature, Europe Regional Office. Please, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone, and thank you to the chair and organizers for inviting me to this important roundtable and to give the opportunity to IUCN to present our views on this important proposal. Um, IUCN welcomes the proposal for a monitoring framework for forests, and we believe indeed that, that monitoring is a crucial step to ensure resilient European forests. And we welcome the ambition of the proposal to reach an EU-wide harmonized framework. As we know, forests are multifunctional ecosystems. They provide goods, ecosystem services, and functions to society. However, there are a number of factors, uh, stress factors and hazards that are threatening these ecosystems and their functions. Climate change, biodiversity loss, land use changes, wildfires, pests, droughts, all these factors are undermining the resilience and functions of these important ecosystems. And in a world that is facing a triple planetary crisis of biodiversity loss, climate change and pollution, it is even more clear that forests can play a crucial role as they are essential for biodiversity and climate regulation. And also they are very important for the EU's bioeconomy. 
As such, forests cannot be looked at and addressed solely from specific um, perspectives, but they have to be looked at as whole systems, considering all variables. So far, monitoring tools and services provide some standardized methods, for example, through Copernicus, and relevant data is collected through national forest inventories. However, it appears that these tools have so far focused on some variables more and less on others. For example, biodiversity remains still under considered. And IUCN stresses the importance of biodiversity and encourages that the law helps to ensure this factor is properly considered in forests. In the EU, there are many different definitions of the way data is collected for forests, and this clearly does not allow for comparability. The result is that in the absence of a coherent and harmonized monitoring approach, policymakers and land managers are left with an incomplete picture, which therefore is challenging the ability to then determine effective forest disaster prevention, preparedness and response. Um, for this, it is clear that um, it is very important to make sure that this framework is made of real value to policymakers and forest managers. The framework should certainly um, um, build as much as possible on existing tools, on national inventories and the relevant data they collect to be based on the best available data. However, they should also it should also overcome current limitations, and this might require expanding from this uh, existing tools. For instance, and this has already been said, forests can be by nature cross-boundary, and since they do not stop at physical borders, an EU-wide uh, monitoring framework might help overcome this challenge. IUCN believes that the proposed regulation will work as a necessary step to enable progress also on other EU policy objectives and priorities. Uh, as it is only by accurately and comprehensively understanding forests that we can better ensure their healthy state and resilience capacity. To conclude, we would like to stress the importance of keeping the environmental ambition of the European Union, hoping the implementation of the EU Green Deal and all its elements continues to be a priority in the future. In, the context, we, in this context, we would hope that the final forest monitoring law will keep a high level of ambition. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Susanna, uh, for your intervention. And now we're moving to online. Uh, Anse Pekka Renan, Senior Forestry Officer, uh, Forestry Division, FAO. Please, the floor is yours, Christian. Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon, colleagues. Um, let me start with some background. Um, for 75 years now, FAO has been conducting global forest resources analysis uh, every five to 10 years. As as per the reporting cycle. And over the time, these assessments have evolved from centralized sort of top-down analysis to participatory processes where the data are collected through a global network of officially nominated national correspondents. They are responsible in the countries to compile the reports and, and uh, submit them to FAO. Recently, we have uh, worked towards the same objectives as, as EU is doing now and introduced a new digital reporting and dissemination tool to improve the transparency of the reporting and allowing the countries to share more thorough documentation on the process and allowing easy to access all and allowing easy to access to all data and metadata reported by the countries. We are also supporting the countries with tools and methods developed under the Open Forest Initiative to make the countries, to help the countries to become self-sufficient in continuing and conducting their national inventories. And these tools have been really, uh, really successful. They have reached more than 2,100 users in more than 190 countries and territories. Now, against this background, we welcome EU's initiative to support policy formulation, decision-making and impact monitoring through improved collection and sharing of up-to-date and reliable forest data. It is also good to see that the proposal addresses the important mapping tasks related to fires and other disturbances that have caused such a, such a big concern in the past years. We also welcome the fact that the proposal builds on national expertise and tradition in conducting national forest inventories and it actively seeks to resolve concerns related to data integrity and confidentiality. 
as already mentioned by some of the colleagues, revealing locations of permanent monitoring sites could result in a treatment bias and lead to wrong conclusions regarding long-term trends in the forest. And this is very dangerous. Regarding the technical content of the proposal, we would like to comment the following. First, I was already referring to this network of national correspondents and to ensure smooth flow of the information, it would be advisable to use this same network of national correspondents for both processes. Um, the proposal makes several references to the term forest plans. Um, and I think that to clarify, to avoid its misinterpretation, it should be probably defined in this proposal. It seems that the forest plan is used to refer to long-term strategic plans and visions at national or regional level. However, the more common use of this term, uh, in my view, is forest plan or forest management plan is to refer to management of individual forest management units, concessions and similar. The term as used in the proposal could be potentially replaced by national forest program, uh, which refers to national level long-term vision, vision and strategy for the forest sector. In Article 2, as I think already also mentioned by some of the colleagues, the proposal limits the in-situ data to data collection in the field. It may be advisable to expand that to cover also data collected using uh, very high resolution remote sensing or other means to allow uh, verification and quality assessment of the products uh, produced in a centralized manner. In, in the Article 3, the proposal makes a reference to systematic collection of aerial or space-borne ortho -im imagery. This seems to necessarily exclude data acquired by active sensors, such as radar and laser scanners, uh, which I think that uh, could, the, the proposal would benefit from taking a more comprehensive view uh, to, different, to use of different remote sensing sensors. Uh, part of the proposal uh, is referring to mapping of forest units, which are defined as areas with similar core characteristics, such as minimum area, tree cover density, and forest type. The proposal also suggests that the Commission will collect standardized data on forest area, forest type, and forest connectivity using remote sensing. Uh, I just wanted to highlight here that separating forests from other tree formations, such as fruit orchards, parks in urban environment, and agroforestry systems, with Earth observation data only can be extremely challenging. Therefore, it is advisable to conduct such an analysis in close collaboration with the national experts to reach the objective of uh, having accurate data across the European Union. In the context of the work that FAO is doing in the countries, we are indeed relying on involvement of the national experts in the remote sense, in many of the remote sensing activities we do to overcome uh, these difficulties. In addition to these uh, detailed technical comments, I would like to remind you all that the, about the ongoing work uh, in which FAO is further developing tools and guidance for improved reporting on primary forest. That links also, of course, to the work uh, or to the mentioning of the old growth forest in the proposal. The result of this work will be finalized in 2024. And similar work on the definition of forest degradation and reporting on it will be initiated later this year. Finally, we would like to encourage the Commission to release all algorithms and tools developed under this initiative uh, for the analysis of Earth observation data for all users under an open source license. That would benefit similar efforts, not only within the European Union, but also, also in all parts of the world. Thank you for your attention and back to you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anse. And now we move to, to Mark Maki Hokola, Chair of Forestry Walking Party, Copa Kojeka. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, I have three short points to make. The first one is, is the purpose and the use of forest data, it remains unclear. 
Of course, the aim of data harmonization and helping member states will support that. However, if the, the aim of having regulation with a clear indication how the data will be used is not supported by us, supported by forest owners. Uh, the subs subsidiarity is also an open question. For example, I'm proposing the development of national forest plans. The forest plans, is, they are also in interesting. Uh, that uh, we, don't, we do not understand why a voluntary tools is included in regulation. Of course, we could learn some lessons, for, for example, from deforestation as regards the administrative burden and the high level of resources that are needed. <clears throat> As mentioned before already, there is overconfidence in satellite data. The good data quality needs also field work, and that could be and will be highly expensive. The second point, what is the value added? And do we understand the costs? Uh, the forest unit and uh, monitoring site def definitions, those refers to forest holding data. And when we talk about open access to forest owners data, it's a no-go area. Uh, as mentioned before already, the indicators, indicators proposed by the commission are already being reported uh, part of various international processes. For example, Forest Europe. It could be a good idea to continue with those. And, and uh, also various countries have already highly developed forest inventories. What is the value added of creating new data framework to do a duplicate. Um, to interpret the data, it ain't easy. And the data interpretation and verification should not be performed by commission, but you uh, by uh, by you but using the expertise of member states. And the third point, the data ownership is a key. Uh, the data ownership needs to be respected. Forest level data should not be published as it includes sensitive informa information about forestry. Unclear definitions and the scale as well as the open access to detailed data is not accessible. I'm also a forest owner and for me, it's not all right that the data from my property would be open. I feel like that coming to my forest is about the same than coming to my home. It's often said that the, it's, it's not influencing forest owners, but only member states. That is, that's not true. This is directly influencing 60 million forest owners. For me, for example, for me, this proposal is not, uh, not giving no new tools, just giving things to be worried over. Uh, to summarize uh, the subsidiarity principle, it, it must be remembered. Delegated acts should not be used as they do not entail the needed flexibility. There is no need for regulation. Uh, the aim with the proposal could, could be achieved through, through guidelines. It could, guidelines could be a good tool. So please provide help and tool for member states and forest owners, but do not provide controlling and extra costs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marco. Indeed, uh, we finished the second part and now we're looking for the commission reaction. Uh, but I'm very proud that we hear that my, I think that frequently the world that we support or we welcome, the aim, the goal, but there are some questions and I hope that you will uh, be answer for some of them, the definition, the added value, the transparency, cost of this whole activities and subsidiarity and also the close core collaboration with the national expert. The, please, the floor is yours. Uh, Jan Kondesko, head of the on, of unit on land use and management, DG and the European Commission. Please, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, also, thank you for the, uh, the opportunity to listen to these uh, views, many of which uh, we have uh, we have heard. Um, uh, already, uh, either when we consulted uh, and we had discussions with the stakeholders, and also uh, a lot of them, I think most of them, we have heard also in the in the discussions in the in the legislative process. Now, well, but that's I think it's uh, it's um, expected for the commission. I'm uh, between two, uh, you know, difficult uh, points. One is. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, 
uh, and uh, the anvil and, uh, and the hard place because we have only five minutes uh, <laughs> to intervene. And uh, so many, uh, so many interesting uh, questions. So yeah, I'll try to to make a, a summary and uh, come up with uh, with some um, uh, points. Of course, the more detailed, uh, and I want to reassure everybody that uh, the the more detailed uh, explanations and discussions will be in the in the in the legislative process, where I already mentioned a lot of questions have been already asked. So, well, I take note, um, uh, I think with uh, satisfaction that uh, I think most, uh, if not all of the, the participants welcomed uh, the proposal, maybe with the, the exception of the, the last um, uh, intervention. But as you also mentioned, there are a lot of buts and, and also concerns that I will try to, to clarify. Now, of course, when the Commission puts on the table such, uh, such a legislative proposal, we need to justify the, the subsidiarity and the proportionality principles. I think this was uh, mentioned already. These are also part of the impact assessment uh, that we uh, already published. So, uh, well, also because of, uh, of the, the time constraints, I would not go into the, those uh, details. However, I would like to, to insist uh, that, uh, well, we are already aware that uh, our forests are under a lot of, uh, a lot of pressures. We want to uh, uh, be able to, to use them in the, in the coming years and also for the, the next generations uh, for all uh, the, the, the ecosystem services they are, uh, they are uh, providing, including the, the provision of the, the wood, uh, but also other products as, uh, as, as well also for their uh, importance for biodiversity, habitats, uh, water purification, floods, uh, regulation, and so on. We see also that indeed, uh, as it was mentioned earlier, with the climate change, our forests are, uh, are facing a lot more uh, uh, challenges than, than in the past. And I would only mention that in 2022, we had uh, more than 2,700 wildfires above 30 hectares uh, forest, each of them. And uh, we had uh, almost 800,000 hectares of uh, forest uh, land uh, affected by these fires. So it's something that also needs to be taken uh, uh, into account. Now, why do we gather this, uh, this data? Uh, well, I just want to draw your attention to the, uh, to the proposal and in particular to the recitals. Uh, I would uh, mention 4 to 13, uh, so recitals four from, from 4 to, to 13. They highlight in particular what would be the uses, why do we gather this, uh, this type of data. Now, because of this uh, uh, proposal of uh, regulation is about collection uh, of data, how to do it, this is the focus uh, in the legislative proposal proper, so uh, as such. However, the objectives and the uses of data are highlighted there. And the, the users are multiple. It would be the EU level, and there I think we mentioned uh, already that this data that would be gathered uh, would be extremely useful uh, for the implementation of various existing pieces of legislation, such as the UCF, um, also the Habitats Directive, also the RED uh, uh, Directive, so Renewable Energy Directive, um, uh, and so on. There are also strategies, but diversity strategy, if I'm to mention, but not only at EU level that could uh, profit a lot uh, in terms of, uh, you know, their own monitoring of gathering this data and having a coherent picture. Yeah. The member states also, uh, they can make a, a good use of this data. And there I would like to insist that the situation is is not good at, uh, at the moment. Indeed, I think we heard the intervention of a few representatives of some of the member states. Some of them are really advanced. And I think this is a good proposal which would also help the others uh, uh, and uh, all of us uh, learn from, uh, from them. But we do have, I think I would uh, um, characterize this uh, triple issue with, uh, with, uh, with the data relating to the forests, and that's a lack of completeness, and that's the most problematic, lack of timeliness and also lack of harmonization. And just to give you a few examples, we have more, I think, in the impact assessment where we looked into which indicators, where they are. It is true, indeed, that we are gathering, uh, and some member states, as I said, they are uh, more advanced, but some have none at all. So that's a problem, because we are a uh, union of, of uh, 
uh, 27 member states, and there are forests which are on which we do not know much. Just to give you a few examples, diversity of non-tree species, they are only gathered by five member states currently. And even the diversity of tree species, so forest proper, are gathered by 20 uh, member states. And these are important to measure uh, and to have an understanding of the forest resilience. 18 member states uh, have data, gather data about the net, net annual increment and felling. And this is related to the economic part, uh, so productivity of forest and use intensity. And uh, I think the, the uh, indicator, which was mentioned already, old growth and primary forest, only 12 member states. So it is not as complete as it is, it is sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, uh, mentioned. Um, and also, uh, I said it already, we have issue with the timeliness of gathering and reporting this data. In, uh, in the, so we are not understanding uh, the same, and this is also linked to the harmonization. It is also true that for the more advanced member states, it would be, um, well, some adjustments will, uh, will be uh, needed but not so much. But for others, the development of these systems will be, uh, will be needed. Also, the development in some limited cases of national forest inventories. And as I said, the experience which is there uh, could be uh, helped and could be also tapped into by using this, uh, this piece of legislation. And I don't have the time to expand about the money, but there are new funds which can be used also in, more, in this more uh, uh, problematic uh, situations. And of course, the costs would reflect this. So those who have more advanced uh, uh, systems, the costs would be uh, limited. Uh, those who need to develop would be more, uh, more uh, uh, significant. But uh, yeah, there are also EU uh, funds that could be uh, tapped into. There are a few indicators, but only a few, which relate to biodiversity. One of them was mentioned, uh, old growth and uh, primary forest. We think that these are particularly important. There are very few such forests uh, remaining in the EU. And it is important to know where they are and what's their extent if we want to protect them. And that's the reason for including them in the list. They are also linked to the implementation of other pieces of legislation, for example, the Red Tool, where uh, the use of such uh, uh, wood uh, it is prohibited. So obviously, we need to know where the, and rather the member states, where, where the, 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 the uh, wood is, is sourced. So we think that this is something important. However, and that's also an important consideration because there were some comments, some said, well, maybe you have too many indicators, maybe they are not the best ones. Uh, some said, well, there are not sufficient indicators in relation to the, the, the biodiversity in particular. So we try to strike the right balance. And I want to stress again, the fact that this proposal was is already based on the, a lot of discussions with stakeholders, uh, also the, uh, some of the, the NFIs experts at national level. That's why it was possible for us to come with the details that we have put uh, about uh, resolution frequency and so on that you see in the annexes of this uh, of this uh, uh, proposal. Well, we agree with you, and it, this is open for uh, for discussion that certain aspects may be improved. And of course, that's the role of the legislative process. So we invite all of you to feed uh, all the, the particular comments that you, you have. Some of them, I think, we, we have uh, taken note of. But to feed them into the, uh, the, the debate through the, the channels uh, uh, you, are, uh, you are using. So all, this, uh, uh, all these parameters, so the number of indicators, which indicators, uh, 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 also, I think we have detailed discussions on the de uh, delegated or implementing acts. Why we wanted to use uh, those is indeed to go into the more technical aspects. And that's a technical proposal. So we also wanted to have a right balance uh, because obviously there are limitations in what we can put at this stage in the, in the regulation. But again, I draw your attention to the annexes so where the data could be uh, established at this stage with, uh, with the, the national experts. We have put it in the regulation. Some more technical aspects we thought there would be for, for comitology acts. But there I also remind you that this is not only the Commission. This needs to be approved and discussed in, the, in advance with the, with the member states. And we fully agree with you and all those that intervene that indeed uh, 
uh, interpretation of data, discussions, and agreement at the end of the day with the national experts, it is crucial, and in particular the NFIs, which were mentioned, and that's why we have a chapter on, on governance. Of course, we can see how much we should put there, how much farther we can go into the clarifying this, and, uh, how this operates, and, uh, and so on. But that's why we put those provisions, because at the end of the day, we need to have a clear understanding. Well, there were also mentions on this mapping. At the end of the day, um, well, what we want to have is comprehensive data, so clear data for, uh, for everybody and open and transparent uh, uh, use of data. Uh, so therefore, they would need to be made available uh, uh, at the end of the day in, in, in some kind of um, intelligible maps. Uh, there. But there I want to insist on the, the level of the, the resolution, and that's in relation to the, the confidentiality of data. So there I think I already heard uh, in probably two, three interventions uh, that some of these data, uh, so location, for example, of the sampling points would be made public. No way. We think we clarified, we mentioned a few times also in the legislative process in the, in the, in the working party. That's not the case. That's not the purpose of it. So this would be, well, this type of data might be needed in the exchanges and the discussions between the, uh, the uh, experts. But what we need at the end of the day is data which has a certain level of, uh, of aggregation and which is useful for this, uh, this uh, 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 the purposes uh, listed in the, in the recitals of the, the regulation and the regulation uh, uh, itself. So, again, this uh, location of data, our intention was not to, to uh, make them uh, public. And, of course, we do understand that there are sensitivities relating to the private data and, and so on. But this data would not be, even be gathered. That's why we also come with this um, notion of uh, forest unit to have, especially for the bigger uh, forests, some kind of comprehensive breakdown of this, uh, this forest. But that would not be on the who owns the forest. And that would not be the criteria there, or criterion. But uh, it would be based on homogeneity type of forest and, and so on. So the data that we would be gathering uh, uh, based on, uh, on uh, this uh, indicators. And of course, we could not avoid the fact that uh, some some concepts such as forest unit uh, or plan uh, are already used in the national legislations. But, uh, of course, according to the, the regulation, they have an understanding of, uh, of their own. Now, a lot has been said about the long-term planning. Uh, indeed, it's voluntary. Uh, indeed, there is also a choice. Uh, uh, but we think uh, in terms of terminology, planning, strategies, and, uh, and so on, but we think that the proposal is very clear in this respect. These are strategic documents. It's not management plans of the forest as such. It's about trends. It's about listing the problems at the, at the national uh, level and what we want to achieve with the forest, where we want to, to uh, be there. And especially because we see the pressures coming from the climate change uh, and this type of disasters and, and so on, uh, these are needed for resilience. So. Put in simple terms, we'll have the data available, aggregated, uh, uh, based on the regulation. We want it to make sure, as much as possible, that this data is made uh, uh, used of at, uh, at uh, uh, macro uh, level. So it's not about you interfering or the Commission interfering. That's for the, each member state. Anyway, it's, it's voluntary. But we think it is important to have this type of long-term thinking uh, and to be able to, to preserve the forest, knowing the challenges and the, the, uh, the data. And very few member states are, are, are doing this, uh, especially at this time uh, scale, uh, uh, 10, 50, 50 years. Um, I mentioned the issue of, um, of costs. I think I touched also on the, the mapping, also on the issue of, uh, of um, uh, governance. Well, maybe an additional aspect, you'd see that this is not a one-fits-all uh, solution. If you look in the annexes, for different type of, uh, of indicators, we have uh, taken into account what is uh, uh, possible, either by remote sensing, where we can have an increase frequency, but also at ground level where we are bound by uh, a type of uh, cyclicity. So the frequency and the resolution depends uh, on the type of indicators, and this is based also on the input, uh, mainly on the input that we got from, uh, from the, uh, the experts uh, and the consultations we had before the, putting this on the, on the table. So I think 
yeah, I would uh, limit it at this stage. I hope uh, I hope I uh, I was able to to touch on the on the key points. But yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Jan. Uh, indeed, I think we hear some answers. Maybe not all for all questions, but but for some. And uh, now we have the possibilities for ten or fifteen minutes short question and a reaction from those who are not would like to have additional say something. Please indicate in the screen, rising your hands if something online and in call, oh, please. Please introduce yourself and uh, ask the question. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Olekas, and thank you for inviting us uh, to this event. My name is Piotr Borkowski. I represent the European State Forest Association, USTA, for we have our Estonian member speaking. But then uh, what I wanted only to, to add, actually, that uh, on the 27th of, of March, for published its position paper on, on the topic. So then we are eager to, to share and discuss it further. However, maybe referring briefly to the discussion and then also explanations by uh, Jon, uh, my feeling is that or understanding that there is a lot of in the proposal explained when it comes to the objectives, it's about assistance of the member states to, to, to do better forest monitoring than so far, also cooperation among the member states. It's a lot about innovative methods uh, like remote sensing in addition to up to now used uh, checks on, 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 uh, in the field. Uh, I wanted to ask whether the, pro the, the, the proposal actually foresees some concrete measures how to provide the assistance for member states, especially that probably some uh, even indicated in the impact assessment as a bit lagging behind uh, the overall uh, now currently binding uh, national forest inventories in the, uh, and data collection about forests. So then what are the precise measures how to assist the member states to do better monitoring and inventory in the future. Also, maybe how to promote more innovation in the sector in these aspects. And then also, uh, and of course, resources are needed. So then, is there any budget foreseen by the EU for implementation and providing this assistance? And then also, I wanted to ask one more question. There is a close neighborhood of the Union means other European countries just around the European Union, whether the proposal is also trying to, to look how to assist those who are outside of the Union. Maybe this is not the elite club, but they also have forests and then they are in, in, in direct cooperation. Some of those will be coming to the EU, uh, hopefully soon, like Western Balkans, for example. So then I wanted to address these extra questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe we'll we collect one or two more who would like to ask. Please. So it's just to, to complement uh, Piotr's question. So my name is Juana Nago. I work for uh, Copa Cogeca, European Farmers Organization, and uh, the chair of our working party uh, was intervening um, in, in the last panel. Now, um, it was mentioned also, I think, by uh, the chair from, um, rapporteur from the ECOSOC and uh, now also by Piotr, uh, the part on, um, on the resources. We heard also Commissioner Sinkevicius mentioning that EU funds could be used, but nobody, nobody's mentioning which EU funds could be used. Um, and it was mentioned also in, in the intervention from our chair, the, uh, the, the experience that we have today on deforestation. Um, when we look at the list of the countries, uh, we see maybe the same countries that are um, also lagging behind and struggling with the resources that are needed uh, for the preparation of this um, regulation, um, the implementation of the regulation. So first, what can be done, as, as Piotr said, uh, how the EU could help these member states uh, instead of putting even more uh, pressure and increasing the administrative burden for them. Um, and uh, then as well, how we can um, justify the need of a regulation to help them. 
um, do we really need a regulation to um, ensure what you were mentioning before? Uh, in the um, impact assessment, and I'm, there, there were some options, and one of them fully supported also uh, by the results of the uh, public consultation is that forest owners and member states, they, they consider that working together, supporting the, the ones who are lagging behind uh, and maybe uh, having more voluntary approaches uh, could help more than uh, creating a very complex and uh, let's say uh, costly uh, system. So um, I hope, I, we know that anyway, the discussion in the council and in the parliament uh, just started, but uh, we hope that um, this will be maybe better reflected in the discussions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I don't see it. Other questions, but I would like to say for this who are online that you can ask question in the WebEx question box if you would, some would like to, to ask the question. I know, Jan, please, you have the floor to answer these questions. Uh, well, uh, thanks for the, the question. Uh, indeed, uh, the issue of uh, financing is, uh, is an important one. If we looked into that with um, uh, with the impact assessment, I think I tried to touch a bit uh, in, the, in the previous intervention. So again, the costs are indeed not the same. They depend, an indicator from indicator, it depends uh, on how developed the systems are in the, uh, are in the member states. So those, for example, uh, that are doing, and we are discussing about ground level data gathering in particular, because for the remote uh, sensing, it's that it's, Commission is already providing a service cost free for the, the members. So this should also be taken into, into account. However, however, the ground date, um, ground level data should be gathered by the, by the uh, NFIs. And there where there is an additional indicator, in general, the costs are not very high. There is an exception, uh, but this is limited for, we mentioned already, uh, the, those indicators relating to biodiversity, not all of them, but for example, mapping out uh, old growth primary forests and certain habitats, they require uh, additional costs. But it should be balanced out also with the importance of knowing about, uh, about this. And we also modulated and took into account uh, this uh, by putting certain uh, indicators or data in an X3, which means additional time for that. So for example, those habitats, which are not as such uh, uh, covered by, uh, I mean, priority habitats, which are not priority habitats in the understanding of the Habitats Directive, those are covered by, uh, by Annex 3. So the commission took into account the need of giving more time. Now there are in, uh, existing funds there, um, uh, also, I would like to, to connect this question to the, or this point to the, the experience that we, uh, we have. We see that whereas uh, some member states do make forest monitoring uh, because of diverse uh, requirements, we had strategies, uh, we are not at the, forest, the first new forest strategy and so on, some others do not do that. So we think that without uh, agreeing on some uh, common minimal binding rules in some parts of the EU, this would not be developed. And it may be that some of the indicators that we are discussing and they are relating to uh, uh, biodiversity part, uh, resilience part, would not be easily developed also in the, in the more advanced uh, member states. So we think that at this stage, after all these years of experience, decades of, uh, of experience, uh, well, uh, this is an insurance that uh, uh, the data can be, uh, can be uh, collected in a harmonious, uh, harmonized uh, uh, manner. This would also focus financing. Why? Because when it is about uh, the financing, as I said, probably, I mean, this is about monitoring, it's not about the, the, the forest management. So the costs are not so high compared with other pieces of legislation, but they do require prioritization. So if 
frankly, if we do not have binding rules, this would not be prioritized, other would be prioritized. The question is more about the importance of this data. So if we agree that we need to have uh, this, uh, this data in a coherent manner, and this is needed for various purposes, for various stakeholders, uh, then our conclusion, at least in the impact assessment, and uh, we have analyzed that, it's that the binding uh, set of minimal uh, rules uh, would be the, the, the way ahead. Which funds? Well, we can have cohesion, we can have uh, RRF, we have for reform, for example, uh, the, the uh, development of the NFIs, uh, for example. Uh, there is a, a dedicated department in the in the commission dealing with uh, with that, so we can also assist not only with uh, uh, you know developing indicators and uh, and so on, but also with setting up this uh, uh, these uh, services. So yeah. Thank thank you very much. And uh, all this time, uh, the Michel uh, Shredro follow us. Online, Michelle, you have the floor. Hello, can you hear me? Or can you see me? Thank you hey. very much. Thank you, Jesus. I um, followed uh, all discussion, all presentation. I would like to thank all of you for your participation. Uh, you are a distinguished guest, especially uh, dear Josuas Olekas uh, to you for initiating this discussion. Today we have heard many valid points from the sector, member states, various stakeholders and European Commission. Um, we clearly lack the time to reach the position of the proposal in Parliament and the respective committees during the current mandate. Uh, however, this roundtable today was important in starting a proper discussion in the European Parliament with you, with the relevant actors. I agree with many concerns and critical points you mentioned today on behalf of member states or respective organizations. There are many aspects of regulation that need to be improved and further clarified. We have already heard most of them let me just highlight a few of them as a shadow reporter of agri committee the new framework should be built on the existing national forest inventories or other national forest data collection system and uh, it's crucial to use those systems already in place in the national level you mentioned many of you we should strive to eliminate the administrative burden instead of increasing it. The new data framework should be primarily cost effective. I think uh, it's, it's crucial for us as member of the European Parliament no, not uh, establish new border, new administration. Uh, so the, the requirement for sharing the location of monitoring uh, sites poses a significant risk despite the proposal safeguards, which doesn't exist yet. The proposal needs to respect the principle of subsidiarity and proportionality. In this moment, I would like to mention that there is the principle that uh, member states, there is the interest of member states, uh, of owners to have good forestry, to have um, um, safe and, uh, and very uh, large and uh, good uh, forest. Is not and the, the European Union should just assist and to help member states to help owners to uh, fulfill this uh, this uh, mission. So and their their duties. Last but not least, the large number of delegated and implementing acts should be lowered and defined primarily to technical aspect of the regulation. It's clear; it's not possible to, uh, to uh, have uh, so many uh, delegated and implementing act. So dear colleagues and dear guests, thank you for today's open and transparent discussion. We all have gained new insight to consider. And uh, I hope that uh, the outcome of this round table will be reflected in the ongoing work on this proposal and serve as a basis for our next steps 
a European Commission concluding. I think that now we know uh, all what is on the table and we can uh, we can discuss and we can uh, reconsider uh, for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, don't worry that we not uh, uh, have time in this time. We will have the time on the next time. <laughs> it's <laughs> coming. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, dear colleagues, we have only five minutes, and I see that Yaroslav Kubish, uh, Kubishta, uh, raised a hand. Please, uh, Yaroslav, the floor is yours. We demonstrate flexibility. Thank you very much. I, 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 I don't want to prolong the, the discussion anymore, but uh, I just wanted to react on, on the assurance by Ion uh, that uh, the, the uh, exact coordinates of the inventory plots will be uh, will not be uh, published actually and I, I wanted to ask if he can share some details how the data will be protected because so far I understood that uh, the the idea is that we will provide the exact coordinates they will be stored somewhere inside the database and will be available for use to uh, to overlap with uh, some um, some uh, GIS layers, for example, and uh, to 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 intersect the the GIS uh, or the remote sensing information uh, with the inventory plots. And I just want to want to raise uh, our warning that we have already proved that using Two different, uh, two different images from Sentinel data, you are able to disclose the positions uh, of the inventory plots this way. Uh, I mean, I mean, if if you have two different uh, images from the Sentinel uh, uh, and you uh, overlap it with the with the positions of the inventory plots, you can find out where the plots are. Even if you if you don't see, I'm sorry, I cannot explain it. it really um, very well in the English but but the, the it, it's quite easy to 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 find out the positions of the of the plots this way and the other other thing was uh, I, I tried to I tried to raise the issue that we don't know the the exact uh, purpose of, of uh, each indicator and it was it was uh, repeated several times that the purpose is described in the in the text, uh, I have to say I really do not agree and I didn't see the explanation why, for example, we need a uh, forest area on an annual basis. And I just want to uh, raise the example we had in, uh, in our institute that uh, yeah, also, once you, you try... can summarize because the time is running. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And just find it. I, I just wanted to ask about the protection of the inventory plot. Thank you. I'll pass my the colleague to, uh, sorry, the floor to my colleague. Thank you. Um, hi, Yaroslav. Very briefly, um, this is uh, a question that uh, it cannot be re replied in details now because, as you know, in the proposal, this is one of the aspects which is to be left to secondary legislation. What we made already very clear is that we share the objective, uh, and there are two schools there, those who say, you can provide the coordinates, but this coordinates should not be public, so it should be provided like to a body which is restricted. And those who say you provide the coordinates, but the coordinates have to be provided in a way that, uh, that they are blurred. Uh, like, I mean, I'm not a technician, so, but you know what I mean. Uh, so, but this is, uh, I think that we share the objective. Uh, nobody wants to jeopardize uh, uh, what is already existing by releasing geographical coordinates where this is not appropriate, but we have to find the, the right way. And this is actually one of the points in discussion in the, in the co-decision procedure. Okay, dear colleagues, thank you very much for participation in this our round table. Thank you, speakers. Thank you, members from the commission. And uh, I think we will, Michelle Anades uh, from Climate Change and Biodiversity and Sustainable Development Intergroup, will follow this uh, question. Uh, we have time not in, in this term, but uh, timetable is, will continue on the next term. And I hope that we will have um, some additional 
discussion and talks uh, to finalize our decision in European Parliament. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you.